Regional Airport. Automated weather observation 1858 Zulu. Wind 070 at 04. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 16 Celsius. Dew point 01 Celsius. Altimeter 3013. Remarks. Density altitude 100. Welcome back. So the purpose of this flight was to test the new O-ring in the back cover of the redrive to see um, if it had stopped the oil leak. So that was the main goal. Well done, the power up to 352 Tango Delta, holding short of 35. Raptor 352 Tango Delta, go back to power, right close traffic approved, runway 35, clear for takeoff. Uh, negative, actually won't be right close traffic. I'll just be going over to the east a little bit and just climbing up over there uh, to Tango Delta. Number 352 Tango Delta, Roger. Okay, so runway 35, uh, clear for takeoff, 352 Tango Delta. And I was also going to take the opportunity to uh, do a bit more um, research with the autopilot to see how that's working. Approaching runway 35. Entered runway 35. 7,900 feet remaining. And since this flight, I've been actually doing some more um, configuration with the autopilot on the ground, and I've actually even had Garmin on the phone. And there's definitely an issue that they haven't been able to figure out yet in that the autopilot is not able or is not uh, correctly controlling the trim motors when you turn it uh, to actually do that so they're working on that and I've sent them some data logs so I'll have to wait and see what they come up with on that. And I also asked Garmin about whether there was some uh, adjustment I could make for the uh, pedo uh, for the indicated airspeed um, because you know it seems like it's always reading high and now that I look back more at the logs even though I have the uh, you know for testing purposes I have the static port open into the cabin right now where there's enough you know there's enough ways for the air to get in and out of the cabin right now around the doors the, the seals aren't inflated and also in the nose uh, on the forward bulkhead um, the vents there for the pressurization vents are open and also in the rear there um, the opening in the keel there is is enough there, but I see what's still happening. There's still uh, a low pressure forming uh, in the cabin when you're flying, and that's making the al altimeter read high, and it's also making um, the uh, airspeed indicate a bit high. And I'm not sure, um, other than you know, getting one of these um, sort of temporary uh, outside placed static ports that I can move around in order to find where the best static point is. Um, I'm not sure really what I can do on this. I was hoping just that, you know, the usual alternate static thing would give me a reasonable enough reading. And, you know, maybe it is reasonable enough just for what for what I'm doing there. I mean, all my, if I just know that all my airspeeds are a little bit high, uh, you know, for the purpose of just, you know, initial testing on this aircraft. And I know everybody's going to bitch and moan, oh, you can't do that. Well, I can do that can do whatever I want it's an experimental aircraft um, but anyway um, so I need to think about that some more you know whether I spend a whole bunch of time trying to locate exactly where the static port needs to be just using a temporary one or um, I just sort of push on with what I have until um, you know I've got this aircraft you know repositioned where we can have more people look at this problem and uh, figure out the best place for the static port so I'll have to just wait and see on that I mean Ultimately, if I know that the airspeed is reading high, then that's enough for now, I think. So I climbed up to about 4,000 feet here and uh, just wanted to get enough time to allow um, the oil to build up in that redrive if it was going to do that again. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it was because after the last flight there still, the fact that I had uh, oil uh, leaking out of there means you know that the redrive wasn't um, self-draining enough and in fact sure enough when I got on the ground there was still an oil leak and it looks like this time it's not coming from where the o-ring is but it's coming from the oil seal that uh, engages the actual 
um, shaft itself on the uh, forward side of the of the redrive towards the nose of the aircraft. So, and of course, that seal there is a nitrile one as well. So I've gone and, um, and ordered a Viton one for that to run high temperature, but I've also uh, ordered and since already received a scavenge pump, which is you know used for a low mounted turbo in a car application. So I'm gonna put that in line so it will actually suck all the oil out of the redrive there out of the housing and then you know pump it back into um, pump it back in into the engine sump. And then I've also ordered, now that I've got a pump and I've got what looks like a pretty decent flow of oil there when the prop's running at the course pitch, I've also ordered an oil cooler that is going to live and be installed or mounted or placed inside the, um, the cowling vent there that you see at the bottom there of the aircraft there. Um, so it's about 12 inches wide and about three and a half inches high. And so it, and all of the air coming out of that cowling vent will go through this oil cooler and then the oil cooler will be fed by the scavenge pump. And then, you know, basically that'll go back into the engine. So uh, with any luck, that should actually um, give me some more oil cooling. And if it doesn't, I can also plumb it into a, another feed, the feed that goes to the governor, but we'll see how that goes. Um, anyway, so I did get it on the ground and everything was fine, and uh, except, you know, it was leaking oil. So as I said, changing out the oil seal and putting in a scavenge pump. And then later in the week, uh, you know, after I've done a test with the scavenge pump, then I'll put the oil cooler in place. I just want to get like a baseline of how things work just with the scavenge pump and then be able to put the oil cooler in and see how much of a difference that makes. And then, uh, and then go from there. So that's what's going on. But so I won't be able to do another flight now until the um, scavenge pump is in line and the oil seal that I'm waiting for is not going to arrive until uh, like late Monday evening. So, and I'm, I'm going to have to do a bit of a ground test once I've got the scavenge pump in place. I'm not just going to fly it without doing some ground runs and static runs and stuff with a new setup like that. So it probably won't be until later um, Wednesday or possibly Thursday before I uh, can fly it again. And then, of course, the oil cooler is going to arrive on Thursday, I think, or Friday. And then I'll get that plumbed in and then we'll go from there. So it's, you know, a case of test, uh, find problems, um, you know, look at solutions, implement a solution, and then uh, see how that solution works out. And then if it does, then go on to the next thing. But, of course, all of this oil leak and stuff came about because it was really the first time I've really had any extensive running of the engine with the prop at the most coarse pitch which is putting more oil into the redrive and uh, you know built, allowing it to build up on, with pressure that I didn't have before uh, so yeah that's what's going on and uh, I'll let you watch the rest of this approach and landing there it was a little bit bumpy oh and the other thing I've, I've number two thing with us and we're three sides for the land Delta. Yeah, the other thing I've figured out now is that the way that I've got the, uh, the mechanical advantage there on the side stickers, I've really got um, more throw on the ailerons than what I need. So um, what it really works out is, is the stick is, is overly sensitive and at the same time it's uh, heavy even though I've got those uh, spades on there. Ideally it would be nice if I could just sort of cut it in half in terms of I'd have the same amount of stick throw that I have now from left to right but the ailerons only move through half the amount of travel that they have right now and I think the aircraft would handle uh, you know still have it not quite the same uh, roll rate as what it had 500 but the um, the it would be lighter on the controls and it would be less twitchy so right now I've got a be, one mile final runway three five I've got to be fairly um, sort of gentle on the control so I don't over control it um, and at the same time it's difficult to push that way but anyway because of the geometry and the push rods and the way the clearance holes and everything are it's not just as simple as just changing one of the bell crank um, positions there I'd like to think it is that but you know we've got to clear and make sure that that uh, push rod is not going to hit on the uh, clearance hole that it goes through, through you know spars and things like that. So unfortunately, there's nothing I can change really on this one. I'm probably just going to have to live with it, and then we'll adjust it for uh, production. So it's uh, more throw with less travel. 
and you know ultimately we're thinking about uh, converting the ailerons into flaperons and then adding some flaps as well so you can land this thing much slower so that's the plan uh, anyway so that's this flight um, and it was a total of about 30 minutes altogether and uh, yeah other than that that's what it was so that's the plan going on thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again on the next one and see what I've got for you cheers <laughs>